I'm Catherine Dulac. I'm a professor of molecular and cellular biology in the MCB department. And this year I will be teaching a new course called MCB 125. So the course is about the molecular basis of behavior. And I guess the uh, fundamental question is, um, how is behavior organized in the brain? How is the control of behavior organized in the brain? And you can think about this in at multiple levels. And the level we will be thinking about is the level of genes and the level of molecules. It's a bit of an unusual way to think about behavior uh, at first because you think more about, you know, behavior is the coordinated activity of, of uh, specific brain areas. But if you look at behavior, um, um, any type of behavior. Behaviors are transmitted genetically. They are usually um, very common to a particular animal species. They evolve from one species to the other. We humans have very specific set of behaviors. Any animal species has very specific set of behaviors. And those behaviors need to evolve um, when the environment is changing, for example. I've, I'm just very intrigued about several aspects to this. One is how do animals recognize each other? What are the specific stimuli that trigger instinctive behavior such as fighting or mating or nurturing? And the second aspect is what's happening in the brain? How are these signals processed? What is special about the processing of social signal or instinctive signals versus other type of sensory information. And then finally, what are the parts of the brain that really are the command centers for those instinctive behavior? And we are working the mouse, um, which is a mammal, vertebrates, and we think that what we will be discovering in the brain of these mammals really is likely to apply in general to many mammals, including primates and maybe even humans. We know that it's too simple to think about one particular area of the brain doing a particular task. That in fact, multiple areas in the brain need to work together in coordinated fashion, in exchanging signal uh, in reciprocal manner in order to generate an appropriate behavior. This is an enormous challenge in the field. How are we going to gain access to the function of multiple brain areas at the same time? I am myself very passionate about the material and I truly believe that enthusiasm is contagious. As far as I can recall, I always want to do research. It's like a treasure hunt. You always look for something and then you look for something else and then you look for something else. And so, you know, it has to be worth it. As it turns out, I think that studying the brain is pretty much worth it. It's a fantastic area. There's a lot to discover. And being a scientist, it's not only what you do in your own lab. It's also what the field is doing in general. And I can't think of a better time to do neuroscience. There's a lot of excitement everywhere about neuroscience. But the newest way of understanding the brain.